We will defeat you with our wombs. We will defeat you with our wombs. So there's a special blessing for those, this is coming from the Quran, who decide to go out there and move to a foreign land. And that's why you see these mosques popping up in very strange cities. I've seen them in, in beach community. Uh, there's a community south of San Francisco called Santa Cruz. It's a surfing community. It's split between surfers and Mexican immigrants, legal and, and illegal. And there's a mosque. Well, this is the last place you would think that the Muslim would want to be with all the women in their little bikinis walking around. But that's what they're doing. It's a special blessing in the Quran. I will also tell you this, as long as we're on to Islam, there's just one other quote. I tweeted this out earlier today, and it's, um, it's a quote from John Quincy Adams, you know, the former president of the United States of America. As the essential principle of Muhammad's faith is the subjugation of others by the sword. As the essential principle of the Muslim faith is the subjugation of others by the sword. They were saying this back in the day, folks. This is a this is a principle. This is a pillar, if you will, of Muhammad's faith, of the Muslim faith, the subjugation of others by the sword. So they defeat you with the womb and they convert you at the sword. And if that doesn't work, they take it to the next level. They take it to the next level. Let's talk more about this. And I can't wait. Eight, five, five, four hundred Savage. Brian Sussman filling in. For Michael Savage on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Savage here on the Savage Nation. Let's talk to Travis. Travis is in South Carolina, WTMA. Travis, thanks for being with us. We're talking about this massive immigration. We're relating a lot of what we're speaking about to Michael's book, which is coming out next week, Government Zero. But in terms of immigration, this chaotic, mass, institutional, illegal immigration, what is this doing in terms of our American ethos? What is this doing to our American culture, Travis? You know, I don't. Um, I'm, I'm really not understanding why we should assimilate to the cultures that are coming in. We're supposed to learn all of their languages, all of their cultures. If you're moving to a country that's better than where you came from, shouldn't you learn the language, learn the culture? If that's truly what you want to do. It's right. not up to us as Americans to learn your language to, to help you fit. If you want to live here and you want to do the things that, that we as American people do, you should learn the culture, learn the language, learn how to assimilate yourself to the society in which American culture is. But right Absolutely. Now, everybody, else, everybody else is trying to learn Spanish or, or Arabic or whatever it is, the language that, that is predominant where everybody wants to learn. I'm sorry, this is America, this is the United States of America, Learn English, learn our culture, learn how to operate within the system legally, and you won't Absolutely. Uh, no, you're right. We're Instead, it's the American citizen who's told, listen, you need to change, you need to adapt. Travis, thanks for your call on the Savage Nation. Well, point, uh, in, uh, case in point. We were sharing a bit ago about the uh, Atlanta School District. 21 different dialects of Spanish have to be taught. 21 different dialects of Spanish, let alone the other languages. This is what we're talking about. I was speaking to a friend of mine uh, who is, uh, her heritage is Mexican. Speaking to her earlier this week. Her husband, same thing. When they were raising their kids, they refused to, they refused to speak Spanish around them. Because they wanted them to learn English because they wanted them to be able to excel in school, uh, first and foremost. They wanted them to be American. They wanted him to go to great universities. So first things first, it was like, okay, you're we we know how, we're bilingual. We know how to speak English. You're speaking English. That's going to be your language of choice. And yes, you will be an American, and you'll be proud of it. And they are. They did an excellent job. Continuing here on the Savage Nation, 
Let's go ahead and speak with Elliot, WABC. Elliot, you're on the air. Go right ahead. Elliot has left the building. Let's continue and go to a lot of great callers. David WMAL. David, you're about to make a great point. I hope you can do it quickly, please. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Well, okay, so uh, this trans fundamental transformation of, uh, of America didn't start with Obama. It started decades ago, and we're focusing on all these bad things that are happening to us in our country when we really should be looking at how did we get here in the first place and fix that thing, fix, fix what caused us to, to get here. And I believe that that is our, the way that we have dealt with, with our children. We've allowed the culture to destroy our families and to take our children and indoctrinate them in secular humanism and atheism. And rather than, than continue that route, we should then do what God says. And he, he says we need to be responsible before him with the children that he's given us and teach them and train them up in the way they should go so that when they're old, they will not depart from it. All of the, these evils that we're, we're uh, complaining about in our, in our society have to do with the breakdown of the family. And if we don't start teaching the, this generation to walk in the ways that they should go in, in, in the ways of the Lord and walk and honor him with their lives, we will never see a recovery David, in our nation. Spot on. Spot on. I've got to cut you off because we've got to get moving on. But the breakup of the family. Listen, you know, even a religiously diverse society, if it's filled with strong, stable, traditional families, guess what? At the end of the day, it won't need a large, expansive, overreaching, heavy handed government. It won't. We'll talk more about this, and I can't wait to speak with you as well on this, The Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Brian Sussman in for Dr. Michael Savage. By the way, next hour, you're going to hear from the doctor. This is a, a portion of a recent show where he really breaks down what's happening to this country in terms of especially immigration. But you want to break down Tuesdays when the book comes out, Government Zero. In this book, besides learning about the fact that we have zero leadership, zero strategy against the Islamic State, zero military, zero education, zero culture, I mean, it's all going down the drain before our very eyes. I think of my in-laws, who are both 90, how they've seen America change. Okay, fast forward another 90 years. No, wait, fast forward 40 years. 40 years, that's a generation. Fast forward 40 years. What's it going to be like, my friends? What's it going to be like? That's why Savage in this book has the 40 actions to save America. Government Zero comes out Tuesday. Go to michaelsavage.com for more information. Zev is at WABC. Well, at least he's listening on WABC in New York. Now, Zev, we've been talking about the religion of peace quite a bit today. Uh, we have President Putin who says there's no different difference between a moderate Muslim and a radical Muslim. What say you, sir? Okay, my take is as follows. First of all, there's no leadership here and abroad. We see that. Vladimir Putin is playing silly putty with Obama, and Obama's absolutely shown no leadership. What is happening, basically, is a billion and a half Muslims in the world. I certainly believe that there is extremist and radical, and there's also the moderate. Most of them are moderate. Seventy percent would not like to go engage in jihad and wait for 72 virgins to reward them, and that's absolutely true. Uh, however, the majority gets blocked into the minority extremist and they will not be able to withstand it or thwart it or hold it back. Case in point, 9-11. At the 9-11, our good friend uh, Joe Potastic had a round table and he says, we're going to have a petition of 100 rabbis, 100 clergy of the Christians, and 100 imams saying and signing, we love America, apple pie, and peace. Who is against that? Nobody. We got a hundred or thousand signatures from all the Jewish and the Christian denominations. However, it came to the Islam, we could get not more than ten. What's going on? This is not Iraq. Wow. What are you afraid of? They're afraid to speak up, and that's the problem. So as they get plucked into this vortex of extremism from the radicals, and this is what we hear, and it's really unfair. But yet, where's the silent majority? How come we don't see any protest? No. So Zeb, Zeb, it's one of those situations. They're afraid to speak up because that re that religion exerts so much power that if you dare speak up, your life in certain parts of the world could be in great jeopardy, correct? True. 
true, and that's why you see that in Ramallah, after a certain sick incident of kidnappings or killing or maiming or, or, or stabbing 13-year-olds, what they are doing is in the streets of Ramallah and Adza, as they're mm -hmm. giving out sweets and candies, and everybody, every passerby, rolls down the window, takes the sweets, and says, Allahu Akbar. So where does that take you? This is what we Zev, are teaching with. Excellent call. I appreciate you checking in on the Savage Nation. 1.5 billion Muslims. Uh, is it is it in the Muslim world the way it is in other religious worlds? Uh, Christianity, Judaism. Uh, I know of those. You know, let's let's be real. There are a lot of Christians who only go to church on Easter and on uh, Christmas. Right. There are a lot of Jewish people who only go to synagogue on the High Holy Days. And they don't really practice much beyond that. They would identify as Christian. They would identify as Jew. But beyond that, you know, eh, whatever. Uh, then you have the more orthodox of both camps who, you know, they're, they're reading the Bible. They're trying to walk out the Bible. They believe in God. They pray to God, etc. Is it like that in Islam? Uh, where you have the various degrees. In other words, a lot of people say, listen, I was just born this way. What, pff, what the hell? I was just born this way, okay? And then there are others who are more religious, and they're in it to win it, so to speak. Does it work like that? Uh, let's continue here. Here's Obama just speaking of the religion of peace. Are you ready for this? This is Obama. He's hosting the Pakistani prime minister. And uh, he's talking about this extraordinary Pakistani-American relationship, the, the Pakistani-American community. He actually says they helped build America. Now, this may be news to many of you. You might even be Pakistani and this is news to you. You're saying, what? I helped build America? What? I'm just here on my H-1B visa trying to make a living in uh, engineering. I'm just going to call. I'm helping to build America? This is all news to me. No, that's what Obama said. Of course, he's had a longstanding relationship with Pakistanis ever since 1981 when he was in college and he visited there. This is clip 16. Take a listen. Uh, I should note that uh, we have uh, an extraordinary Pakistani-American community uh, that is helping to build this country, and that those people-to-people -people ties uh, are part of what uh, makes uh, this relationship uh, so special. What is he even talking about? He just, he just pulls this stuff out of thin air. Rodney checking in from WBAP. Rodney, you're on the Savage Nation. Go right ahead. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You know, I spent some years in North Africa, and my, my father, my father-in-law, is actually converted from Islam. He's from that region. And, you know, I think one way to get the new immigrants from Middle East to, to assimilate is to want is to tell them first about who they were before they be, became a conquered people. Islam converted by the sword, and you had mm -hmm. civilizations before the conquest. And once they get to know, once they let go of this identity of Islam mm -hmm. as an imp something imposed upon them from history, then they're open to hear the, about the truth and the gospel of Jesus Christ. They can learn about other things. But we've got to educate them on who they were before they were a mm -hmm. conquered people. And I think that's, that's, just, that's just critical. I, the, I've, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that, Rodney. I've been thinking about that about that a lot recently and again not to suck up to savage but he said something i think it was either earlier this week or last week he was talking about lebanon and he was talking about how in 1950 and it caused me to start doing some research on what he was discussing but lebanon was at one time a christian majority country and in 1950 they made a serious error they started an immigration process of syrians and then palestinians Legally and illegally, Syrians and Palestinians started flooding their country. And in 25 years, from 1950 to 1975, there was the revolution and Lebanon becomes a hotbed of hatred. If these people only knew, you know, all these people that converted at the sword in Lebanon, all of these people in Egypt, for example, which was one time a Christian nation, who converted at the sword, if these folks would get back to their roots and see what kind of a culture they originally came from, you're exactly right. Maybe that would cause them to think, I've been hijacked. My family was hijacked into this religion, correct? 
You know, and we have to do the same thing with with our roots. You know, I'm doing something. We're doing something very special here in Virginia, and I'm talking with delegates at the state 